Angela from the blog Angela Marie Mead. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to share my process on how I stain wet and what I found works best. The supplies you're going to need are an orbital palm sander, tack cloth, chemical resistant gloves, a pre-stained wood conditioner, wood stain, and a lint-free rag. You may also need a foam brush for hard to reach areas. Step one is to sand the wood. The key to a really beautiful finish with wood is in the preparation, which is mainly the sanding of the wood. Now I'll admit, I really don't like sanding. Getting covered in sawdust is no fun, but I do it because I know that my wood stain finish is gonna be beautiful in the end with a great sanding job. Another tip when it comes to the preparation of the wood is you want to make sure that your wood that you're using in your project does have a really pretty green to it. The more of a green that the wood has, the more enhanced it's going to look when the stain is applied and it really makes a difference in the long run. Always wear goggles because sawdust in the eyes is annoying as I have experienced firsthand. You can also wear a face mask. For most projects, I recommend an orbital palm sander. For light projects, a sanding block will work, and when you need a lot of sanding, a belt sander can be helpful. It's best to start with 80 grit sandpaper to sand your whole project, and this usually takes the longest amount of time as it really gets all of the rough stuff off of the wood. I usually start with 80 grit, then use 120 or 150 grit, and finish sanding with 220 grit for a very smooth finish on the wood. As you move up in the grit number of sandpaper, the smoother the finish will be on your project piece and the less material is removed. I really like the hook and loop sanding discs for my orbital sander. They stick right on the sander and remove very easily. In this photo, you can see the different sanding makes in the finish of the wood. Step two is to prepare the wood for staining. The final preparation step is to remove all the sawdust from your wood after sanding. And there are many ways to do this. My favorite way is to use a soft bristled brush or broom and sweep off the sawdust. Then to remove the rest of it, I always wipe down my wood with tack cloth. It's sticky so I like to wear gloves when cutting it and handling it, but it works really well for removing the sawdust and you don't need to use a lot of it. After all the sawdust is removed, the next key step is to use a pre-stained wood conditioner. This wood conditioner makes a huge difference in the final look of my furniture finishes. Here's an example where I used wood conditioner on one side and no wood conditioner on the other side of the wood. You can really tell that the side that doesn't have the wood conditioner is a lot more blotchy of a finish. This can easily be applied to the wood with a lint-free rag. Follow the directions on the can, but basically you apply this to your clean wood surface and let it sit for about five to 10 minutes before applying your stain. Step three is to pick a wood stain color. There are two main types of stains. There's oil-based and there's water-based. Oil-based stains are very common, affordable, and popular, and very easy to find. So for that reason, I'll be using it in my example for this video. Also, I just love how oil-based stains look on a wood finish. Water-based stains are typically more expensive, but they do dry faster and they're a lot less smelly and they're also really easy to clean up. So there are benefits to using the water-based stains as well. It's important to note that all wood takes stain differently. 
So it's best to test some different stains on a scrap piece of wood that's the same kind of wood as your project in order to make the best decision about what stain color you want to use. Step four is to apply your stain. Always wear chemical resistant gloves or some rubber gloves and make sure to stir the stain in the can really well before using it, but don't shake it. Apply one coat of stain with the grain of the wood and use the lint free rag to wipe any excess stain off. Then let it dry. I prefer applying my stain with a lint free rag or cloth because I find that it's easiest to control how much is applied and it can be thrown away after you use it. You can also use a foam brush but it does go on heavier but they do work really well for getting in any tiny crevices or areas that are hard to reach. For example, I'm using a foam brush on our desktop in between the boards because it's difficult to get to with just a rag. When staining wood with an oil-based stain like we are here, always apply it outside or in a really well ventilated area. Also, make sure to protect your work surface with some plastic or cardboard or a drop cloth. If you want a darker or deeper color, apply a second coat after the first coat has dried, which usually takes a couple of hours depending on the temperature and humidity levels. Once you're finished staining, you can add a top coat to your wood finish to add extra durability and protect it, as well as to enhance the grain of it. There are many kinds of top coats that you can use from water or oil-based polyurethane to furniture wax to shellac, there's so many options, but I'm going to show you how to use an oil-based polyurethane. Most often I use a fast drying oil-based polyurethane in a satin finish because it provides strong durability and really brings out the beauty and grain of the wood. I've also used water-based polyurethane pretty often too. It just depends on if I want to enhance the grain and make it more of an ambered color, or if I really want to keep the finish the same, I'll stick with a water-based polyurethane. Here's how to apply polyurethane to your wood stain finish. For applying polyurethane, I like to use a foam brush for easy disposal and apply it in very light, long strokes to avoid any foam brush strokes. Again, make sure you're outside or a really well ventilated area. You can also wear a special mask to help avoid the fumes. After applying the first coat of polyurethane, let it dry completely. After your first coat of poly has been applied and dried, the wood grain may have risen some. You can feel this by running your hands over the wood. Simply use a 220 grit sand block and lightly hand sand over the wood. You can then feel the wood again and tell that it's smooth. Use some tack cloth to wipe away the sawdust. Go ahead and apply your second coat of polyurethane. Once your top coat has been applied, let your newly finished piece sit for at least a day with no use, preferably three days, which allows the top coat to cure to a hard, durable finish. Also, make sure to wait at least 12 hours before applying the polyurethane after your last coat of stain has been applied. A few more quick tips for staining your wood include, be aware of what the temperature is, Stain does not dry well or take really well in super humid conditions or really hot or cold weather. So try to stick to less humid weather and more moderate temperatures. Another tip is to make sure you don't use a roller for applying your stain. Always use something that is meant for stain like a staining rag or a foam brush. The last tip I wanna share is that the beauty of stain is that it hides imperfections in the wood really well. So. If you feel like you messed something up a little bit, it's okay. It'll blend in the end and still look really beautiful. Okay, now that you know how to stain wood, you can also learn how to apply a weathered finish to your wood. 
you can check out my DIY weathered wood gray video, which I will link below. And I also have an ebook called Weatherwood Recipes on all different easy and budget friendly ways for different weathered wood finishes. I'll link that below as well. If you have any questions about how to stain wood, please let me know below in the comments, or you can always ask over in our woodworking Facebook group, which is at facebook.com slash groups slash woodworking for the home. Thanks again for stopping by and please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and please subscribe for more fun DIY and decor videos.